Hi guys, this is Echo Soundworks with another tutorial for MassiveSynth.com. So in this tutorial, we're going to be checking out some tips and tricks in the insert section inside of Massive. So really quick, if you are not subscribed to the YouTube channel and you'd like to stay up to date with all of these tutorials, sign up at youtube.com forward slash ADSRTuts. That's T-U-T-S. All right, so the inserts inside of Massive, I think, do two things really well. They can be actually the bulk of what's making a sound because they can take a clean lead or a bass and turn it into a just really digital, gritty, uh, kind of a hard, rough sound in a matter of seconds, or they can be used to kind of strengthen a sound. So they fit both roles very, very well. This I have a deep house bass pulled up right now. And you'll see here that I have one of the insert effects on, and I'm mainly modulating it. So we'll get to that later in this in this quick tutorial but i want to first talk about the signal flow of the inserts i've seen a few more than a few presets made by sound designers and i get questions every once in a while about how to get both of the inserts to work or what's with this routing tab and what's going on with these inserts well there's a few things you can look at it as by default you can always use insert one pretty much um, i would say the only time you wouldn't be able to use insert one is if for some reason you decide to use filter two instead of filter one uh, and you change, you know, for some reason you just decided to bypass filter one, then you'd have to change something. But typically the way it's set up by default is it'll allow you to use this first insert. So if I turn this drive and this dry wet up, you can hear that it's much more gritty and dirty sounding. Well, what about this second insert? Let's activate it by clicking on that little dot. Uh, and then let's use the hard clipper. It's one of the most, I say, aggressive distortion modules inside of Massive. If I play this now, it's no different. Well, that's because of the signal flow. So it's actually pretty easy to understand. So if you look at your oscillators, they go out to your inserts here potentially, and then out to your filter, filter one and filter two. Well, right now, insert two is coming out of filter two. Well, you'll notice with this specific sound, I only have my sound running into filter one. I have it set all the way on the mix to filter one. N filter two is not even on. So if I turn off, you can turn off these inserts by just clicking on them again. If I, if I turn this off, this isn't going to help either. Because I have nothing going on through filter two. So that's why you have to move where this happens in the signal flow. So what you can do... You can actually pop this depending on how kind of your sound set up in the oscillator stages. The easiest way is to just put insert two after it hits the filters, because right now you're going to hear that hard clipper. All right. The the on the flip side of that is if I activate my second uh, filter here and just like I just have a low pass queued up ready to go, turn my mix down halfway. All right, turn the, I'll keep the resonance up so you can hear it. So now you can kind of hear. You know, it's affecting the sound, right? Well, now if I turn on this clipper, you'll hear it. And this insert two was in the exact same spot it is by default, but now I have something happening in my filter two. So you'll notice that, that that's where you can actually start to kind of look at how your sound's created. Or if you're using this just to strengthen a preset, let's say you have this preset that almost works in your production, just needs more bigness. It needs to be a little bit bigger or brighter or thicker. Sometimes it's really helpful to just stop, sit back and think, okay, what's going on here? How are the oscillators routed into my filter? Can I actually use both inserts? How set? And then just go to your routing tab and figure out. But I would say the easiest way is just to pop insert to here. Now there are benefits to having it right after the filter, especially when you're modulating because then if you're using both filters, it will really control the sound quite nicely. Let's talk about now, let's go to the next little tip and trick here. Let's talk about modulating the inserts. So I could have with this sound, I can turn these off. I can turn this modulation off. I could have just turned the drive and the dry wet up 50%, right? I mean, that's a cool bass. It works for Deep House. It sounds all right. It sounds pretty good, but it sounds better in my opinion, if you actually modulate some of your drive and dry and wet with an envelope. And this would, this would be the same for uh, really gritty kind of electro dubstep bro step sounds because it just helps, I think, to control it. Because if I just have the dry wet and the drive 
up at 50%. Every time I hit a note, it's now going to be playing that effect at 50% on my entire sound. Well, so it, I think it sounds a lot nicer if you could create an envelope, a custom shape envelope that works for your sound or the goal of your sound, depending on what genre you're in, and applying that to the dry and wet, and then maybe actually adding a creating a macro so you can actually really control it if you need to and assigning it to your mod wheel or another destination on your USB uh, or MIDI controller. Because now there's more control as opposed to just turning these off and turning them up by this drive is about half halfway, right? There's just more control over the sound. And I think it helps make things thicker. And ultimately, uh, if any time you can make the sound more mix ready and polished inside the synth without having to do third party processing and EQ and additive and reductive edits, it's going to be a lot better when you actually start to produce. So there are some two there are two tips and tricks that you can use to kind of strengthen your sounds using the inserts in Massive. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't checked out MassiveSynth.com, head on over there. Tons of cool things Massive. See you next time.